She wrote the book, A Mighty Heart, The Brave Life and Death of Her Husband, Danny Pearl. They were married in 1999, and we'll show you a snippet of the wedding here in just a moment. Marianne, as I told you earlier, was a journalist, and so was uh, Danny, working for the Wall Street Journal. Uh, they met. Uh, they were forging a life together. They were working in journalism to use it as a tool to make life better for all of us. And then, as we uh, probably know from either the book or the story that so inspired Brad Pitt that he produced the movie, and Angelina Jolie starred beautifully in it, and they've become fast friends, uh, as is their kids, Adam. Uh, and, you know, in that movie and in that story, Marianne, I can't get past being a journalist myself and knowing how much it's important to have that morning coffee and how much somebody else in your life can mean towards uh, the ends you try to achieve. But there's the love of your life. There's the father of your child. He was uh, killed in 2002 by the Islamic terrorists when she was five months pregnant. And the story goes that they were having a dinner party that night while he was doing one last assignment in Karachi, and she phoned, and she phoned, and she phoned. And there's no bottom that your heart hits when that phone's not answered. So to come back out of that is one of the truly inspiring uh, stories of all time, and it's the one we're delighted to have you share with us here tonight. And uh, as a means, Marianne will speak right after we give you this little snippet of the journalist and the jihadi that'll show you the, the two beautiful people that were uh, forging a life force. Enjoy Danny and Marianne in this excerpt. So that first weekend he had planned this crazy bike trip in Kent. You know, it was like one surprise after the other. He was like, like, no one I ever knew, you know, really. And that's when, you know, that's when we, uh, we really clicked. He came and visited me in Paris, and then we never separated again. Daniel and Marianne are soon married. So you know the writer, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, who the, wrote The Little Prince? He, he wrote, Love is not to look at each other in the eyes, but to look together in the same direction, you know? And that's exactly, I think, what was the, the you know, the, um, the glue, you know, of our relationship. This is the ketubah, which is the contract of marriage. It is in three languages, in Hebrew, in French, and in English. Marianne Benayanov and Daniel Pearl entered into the following covenant. We promise to grow old together while keeping each other young maintaining our sense of humor, sharing love and secrets. We promise to discover new things, places and people together. We promise to share our happiness with our friends and relatives. We promise not to let money, lack of money or passage of time change us. Well, thank you very much. I am um, very pleased to be here tonight and uh, it's very inspiring to uh, hear all the uh, awardees um, and everybody. It's uh, um, encouraging to be in an assembly of uh, such people of goodwill. Um, you know, I feel like uh, recently we've heard a lot about change. <laughs> you know what I'm referring to, right? And, um, and um, you know, to me, you know, obviously we, knew, we do need change in the world, and, and, uh, but I, uh, I also was thinking, you know, what what kind of change exactly do we need? And um, it seems to me that, you know, this is the beginning of the 21st century and, and uh, we've gone through so many different revolutions, uh, you know, from, you know, the industrial to, to the political revolution and the technological revolution. And there's one revolution that, that you know, that remains. Um, and if you want, you know, I mean, if you will, it's like kind of the end of a cycle. It is uh, what I would call, for lack of a better word, the human revolution. And what I mean by that is that, you know, what kind of change can we uh, inspire, can we trigger, that will raise individuals such as the ones who were awarded tonight. Yeah. So um, then he was Jewish. I'm not Jewish. I'm a Buddhist. <laughs> And, um, and uh, I'm going to introduce you to him as a person because it's very important, um, you know, when somebody like that has died and, and obviously uh, purposely uh, the, his death has been made, been made very public, what happens is that um, then his death starts hijacking his life. 
And we just talked to um, my neighbor at the table here, and she said, you know, she was talking to me about the Holocaust, and she said, what does six million people mean? And I know what she means, because it's, it, you know, each time it is one life, it is one individual, and, um, you know, uh, lost in the numbers, we, lo we lose the significance. So I'm here to say, to, to share a very personal story that way. Uh, and, um, so they ask me, you know, people ask me now, like, why, as a, you know, as a Jew, did he cover the Middle East? You know, why, why, why did he do that? But to me, you know, it was so clear that um, being Jewish um, for him is, um, it was the opposite of being a limit, you know, to his journalistic skills. Uh, I think he really triggered his intellectual curiosity. Um, you know, it made him question conventional wisdom constantly. He made him curious. He made him doubt his own, like, prejudice. And I mean, he made him become the kind of man that you want to be if you were a journalist and a good journalist, as you know. Um, so, so uh, um, you know, I think, like, I just want to just say these few words because, you know, we are in a, in a Jewish event um, that I don't see any other people that are more um, capable of leading uh, other people in the world than the Jewish people for having survived, for having been absolutely everywhere in the world, for having uh, encountered other culture and, and uh, having shown the, the, uh, the ability to live with them. Um, I think that you know, for all the persecution that the, that the Jewish people are going through, they also are, unfortunately, that way, you know, the, the people that can show the light. Uh, and I still believe that today. And, so, and the, the, one of the, the, the reasons that made me fall in love with Danny really um, at first was uh, is actually thanks to my, uh, to my father, to my own uh, story. Uh, and I'll just share that uh, very shortly with you. But my father was also a Jew, uh, a Jewish, and uh, actually a Holocaust survivor. And um, the rest of my family, my, my, uh, my father's family, died in the Holocaust. And he, him and my grandfather survived. And um, it was very hard for him. Life after the Holocaust and after everything he went through was very difficult. And he ended up kidding himself when I was nine. Uh, and he was 42. And be just before he, uh, he died, he, um, he called me. Uh, so basically it was his deathbed, even though I didn't know that. And uh, he said, I have something very important to tell you that you're not going to understand now, but keep it for the rest of your life. And he said to me, he talked to me about cynicism. He said, um, don't ever be cynical. Uh, cynicism is the weapon of the weak. So, um, you know, obviously at the time I didn't understand anything, but I think that uh, has saved my, my own life. And it has saved me as a journalist, it has saved me as a mother, and he has, uh, you know, just, uh, I think, preserved my soul. Um, when I was talking earlier um, at the beginning of this uh, speech about uh, human revolution, I think that has been the basis of my own re human revolution. I think the, most of my efforts, as a, you know, um, as everything I, I, I quoted as a journalist, as a mother, uh, after Danny died, and you know, and for everything that we did together, uh, a lot of my um, you know efforts were, were went into not becoming cynical for everything that I was witnessing in the world, um, you know, um, just um, fighting prejudice all the time. And I started understanding, thanks to that, you know, uh, legacy, which is kind of weird, but it is, an, you know, it is a legacy for my father, that, you know, the main work I was, you know, ever, anything I was ever going to become uh, was going to require uh, work that nobody was going to see. You know, and that was going to be uh, the, the most important thing. And I could become a very brilliant journalist, but not a great person. And so, you know, when I met Danny, he himself was not a cynical journalist, which is very rare. I'm sure my hockey friend here was, where are you? You know, I mean, were, <laughs> well, well, you know, I will agree. It's like, you know, it is a disease in our profession, you know, that, you know, people become very, very cynical. And it seems just to be like a trait of character. And sometimes, you know, it's very easy to be cynical and funny. Uh, but the truth of the matter is like, you know, um, it, is, um, it is a disease to me, you know. It's like uh, once you start becoming cynical um, and, um, and you start losing your faith in human nature, uh, and, and keeping faith in human nature is a, <coughs> excuse me, it's a, it's a willingful act. It's an act of will. It's an act of faith. And, um, and cynicism, you know, just destroys that. And um, so for me, like, you know, when I met Danny and, and I saw that he actually had the, the, the courage to believe in journalism, in what journalism could do, he was humbled by the, the responsibility that brought to him. And he actually lived his life on a daily basis with that kind of philosophy in mind. I fell in love with, uh, with him.